turn in the chat. I'm Jesse. I'm one of the event coordinators at torontojobs.ca. So thanks so much for joining us today at uh, the event and at Nada's booth uh, here. And Nada, thanks for coming out to, to speak again with us. My pleasure. <laughs> uh, so uh, Nada has come out to speak at uh, several of our events before. And you know, I'll, I'll give you just the briefest of intros uh, before you get started. Uh, you know, just uh, because I know you probably have stuff you want to talk about yourself. Um, so, uh, to our attendees, for some background on Nada, uh, she was an IT consultant with 15 years of experience in technical roles, agile transformation, UX, tech architecture, uh, business and law analysis and product management. And she's coached technology professionals at Scotiabank, RBC, Deloitte, Accenture, and Salon Consulting to build their conference, uh, sorry, conference, <laughs> confidence <laughs> hit the ground running and ensure job success. But she's now uh, transitioned to becoming a certified senior professional career coach because she discovered and unleashed her own awesome to learn that her North Star is helping clients who are burned out and new to Canada, like she was, to take their career to the next level. So not only you take it away, and I will hop back on at the end of your session as well to quickly outro you and let people know what's going on after, okay? And just quick question, I'm not able okay. to see people. Um, so I don't see, so the chat is on the right side. Is that where I'm gonna see people entering their questions? Yep, I'll, I'll send a message there just saying, you know, you can send your questions here, okay? Yeah, so if, for anyone who joined, if you click on, this happened to me before, right? I didn't know. If you click on the session tab, so there's event and session, um, you can type your questions in the chat. That way I can see that you go along. Yep, let me just type that in for you. There you go. Awesome, right. beautiful. Thank you, Jess. Okay, no problem. So I'll hop back on at the end, okay? All right, sound good. All right, no problem. Best of luck. Thanks. All right, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to keep these windows open so I can see your questions in the chat where you can ask me any questions as we go along. And um, I'm also going to do my presentation. So feel free as I'm presenting to drop any questions you have in the chat so that we can make this interactive. So just a little intro about myself. My name is Nada Bohendi. I'm an agile and technical career coach. I spent 15 years in tech and I actually am an immigrant. So I immigrated to Canada 19 years ago from a country called Bahrain. And I did get my first job in Canada um, without it having any connections or having any family in Canada. So you know, being in this conference is very dear to me because I love working with immigrants. I've been in your shoes. It's It can be very frustrating and it feels like you're in a new place and have to start over. Um, and I don't want you guys to feel that way. So this presentation is about how to land your first tech job in Canada at 100K plus without starting over, without getting a ton of certifications or taking a lower paying job to get your foot in the door. Um, so I'm introducing to you the six figure salary formula, which is a scientifically proven marketing technique that gets interviews on your calendar and helps you land the 100K plus job that you love. And I say that it is a proven marketing technique, a scientifically proven marketing technique, because um, marketers have actually used these techniques successfully. So we are leveraging them to help people land those jobs. So in this presentation, you'll discover six simple shifts to land a six figure salary job in tech faster than you thought without wasting a ton of money on certifications or having the Canadian experience, which is a huge myth that people keep saying to people. Um, also, the key to getting noticed by hiring managers without trying to beat ATS and the single biggest mistake that prevents job seekers from converting an interview into an offer. Now that can I, uh, sorry. sorry, can I, yes. uh, how can I, uh, you know, expand my screen? Um, I think you can, um, I'm actually not sure. Um, 
at the top, I believe there is a little arrow thing that you could use to expand. Mm. So you can try that. Yeah, because I'm trying to read the. Yeah, try to, try to sure try to follow along as much as possible. Okay. Um, I'll I'll be speaking to all the information anyway, so okay, it would be fine. All right. Awesome. So I want to bust the biggest myth for everyone around, um, you know, needing the Canadian experience. So I want to let people know that actually, in on especially in Ontario, uh, the hum the Ontario Human Rights Commission believes that asking for Canadian experience can actually result in discrimination. So you're actually not obligated on, on your resume to disclose where your experience has been. You're not obligated to disclose your age. You're not obligated to disclose your ethnicity. Um, so some employers ask people applying for jobs if they have Canadian experience. And this is coming from an authority. This is coming from the Ontario Human Rights Commission. So this is something that I'm not making up. Um, that can actually make it much harder for people new to Canada to find work and they say here that the Ontario Human Rights Commission believes that asking for Canadian experience can actually result in discrimination. Employers and regulatory bodies should always have to show why Canadian experience is needed. And Canadian experience is not a good way to tell if you have the right skills or experience to do a job. Employers should ask about all of your previous work. Where you got your experience should not matter. Okay, so especially in tech, I mean, there are some specialized roles where having the knowledge of Canadian law, etc. Yes, I can understand that you need Canadian experience for that. For, jo for jobs like I IT, it doesn't matter where your location is. So that's something that you need to keep in mind when you're applying for jobs. So when you hear those types of things from your friends or from others, uh, tr you know, re remind them of this. So I want to tell a little story actually about one of my clients. Uh, he really is my hero because he came in the middle of the pandemic and he was able to land his first job in Canada working with me, um, actually at CIBC, making a six figure salary. Um, and what happened at the beginning was he was being told that he didn't have enough Canadian experience and he was being offered lower salaries. And then when we went through the system that I'm gonna show you right now, he actually got interviews at Amazon, at Open Text in the same week after we went through this process. And he landed a role in the six figure salary range as his first job in Canada. So what happened to needing Canadian experience? This is a total myth um, that I want you guys to really, really remember. What about for banks or insurance companies? What if they ask for Canadian experience? Again, they need to show valid reasoning as to why you know Canadian experience is required for these jobs. I'm not sure where you're getting this from. Could be from a recruiter. Um, you know, that's that's really not true and not necessary. They really, really need to have solid proof. Like, is mm. it the regulations in Canada that you don't know? That's the reason. Um, but unfortunately, you know, as we all know, even though we have HR laws, even though we have laws out there, discrimination does happen. So I want you guys to be aware of this um, and protect yourselves. Now, I have one question. Sure. And, uh, let's see, the thing is that when I go and apply for a bank, they ask me, uh, am I the, uh, a part of the visible minority? Am I so and so? And you know what? It's mandatory a question that, I'm, that I must answer it. Uh, I don't think that's mandatory. If it is mandatory, that's actually discriminatory. So you're mm. not obligated. So there are questions sometimes on forms um, around whether you're a visible minority. That should be a voluntary question. If it is okay. mandatory, then actually that is discriminatory. You are not obligated to answer questions around your race or whether you're a visible minority. Sometimes they ask these questions for research purposes okay. to see um, you know, if they're getting diverse applicants. Mm -hmm. but you are not obligated to answer them. All right, thank you. 
No problem. So I'm going to talk about the three pitfalls in terms of um, what job seekers do that kind of sabotage their chances. So number one is comparing yourself to the wrong people. And again, going back to the whole, I need Canadian experience, um, or I can't, you know, do this job because I don't have experience. Here's, here's like a perfect example. I mean, Arnold became the governor of California after a childhood in Austria. Remember that, you know, you can beat the record. Everyone is different. And just because others weren't able to accomplish what you want to do or weren't successful doesn't mean that you should use them as a benchmark. Instead, I actually encourage you to look for people that you look up to. Look for the right role models. For example, I have, I, you know, um, when I want to get a certain position, I actually find role models that I really like um, and I strive towards them instead of listening to what other people say um, that I'm limited to. Uh, some of my clients look me up even and they, and they see that I was an immig am an immigrant and got, you know, roles at Deloitte uh, coming into Canada. And instead of comparing themselves, you know, to others who tell them you can't and I wasn't able to, um, they look for role models. So very important to surround yourself with the right people and stop comparing yourself to the wrong people just because someone couldn't do it. Maybe they didn't have a good support system. Maybe they didn't have the right skill set. Don't compare yourself to the wrong people and don't listen to people's negativity. The second pitfall is some people have trouble identifying their zone of genius. They, so, there, so what I call is three categories, the completely confused, the jack of all trades and the laser focused. So the completely confused person has no idea what they want to do with their career. So for example, this is an, these are actual examples from LinkedIn. Uh, so this person, when it comes to looking for a job, she says that she's client focused. So what does client focus mean? That's not really a role. What do you exactly want to do? Do you want to be your client focus? You want to be a sales representative. You want to be a client focus because you want to be an account manager, your client focus because you want to be a business analyst. So it's really important to know exactly what jobs you're targeting, because when recruiters look for you and read something like that, they don't know what to match you with. The second category is jack of all trades. I'm good at everything. For example, I want to be a product manager. I want to be a scrum master. I want to be a quality manager. And people sometimes feel that they need to target multiple roles to increase their chances. But what that ends up doing is it makes them look unfocused and makes them look too much of generalists. And that doesn't help them land jobs because they're not able to differentiate themselves. The third category, which is the winning category, is the laser focus. This is the kind of person who ends up landing roles because they know the exact roles they want to get. So for example, this person markets themselves as a scrum master rather than saying that they're good at everything. So um, the other pitfall that I wanted to talk about is the personalization and connection. People obsess about their resumes. They go through the job search process in a very mechanical way. But what that ends up doing is sabotaging them. Because if you think about it, people hire people they like. They don't hire people based on their resumes. So you got to make sure that A, the way you write your resume helps you stand out, and B, you are creating trust, rapport, and connection during these interviews instead of sounding like a robot and just listing your skills. You gotta communicate in a way that makes you different, and you gotta create that likability with the hiring manager. So here's an example of one of my clients where she said, um, you know, she, re she, she got amazing feedback and she really stood out from other candidates. Important to stand out. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to compete with others. Because the truth is, you really don't need to spend a ton of more money on your certifications. You just need to brand yourself better and market yourself. Settling for lower paying jobs actually makes you come across desperate. So if you think about products, 
if you see a product that seems to provide a lot of value, but it is priced at a lower price, you're going to question yourself and say, hey, there must be something wrong with this product for the price to be low. And that's how hiring managers are going to look at you. If you have a ton of experience and you're settling for lower paying jobs or applying for jobs that are too junior. Also, the third thing, being qualified for the job does not mean you will get the job if you can't convince employers. That's very important. We buy products, not just because they are the best products. We buy a phone or we buy, you know, any other product because the value of the product is communicated to us the clearest way. When it's communicated to us the clearest way through a marketing campaign or through an advertisement, then we are convinced enough to buy it. So being able to articulate yourself in a convincing way is very important. But if you can create a strong connection with your audience, then you will get three calls a week for an interview. I have clients who end up getting a ton of interviews because they're able to create a strong connection with their audience. And you can help them understand, help them, meaning the hiring managers, understand the real value of working with you. And once they see your real value, they will want to pay you the 100K, the 120K, even the 200K for your work. I mean, if you think about it, wouldn't you be willing to pay good money if something is gonna solve your problem and remove your pain? That's the same thing for organizations. And once you do all these things, your job search becomes a lot more fun. So let's dig into the six-figure salary formula and what it is. So the six-figure uh, six salary formula is composed of six parts. Number one, you got to identify your zone of genius. What I mean by zone of genius is your sweet spot. Very important. Number two, you need to create a captivating marketing campaign to create awareness of your value. Three, implement brand stories during interviews. This is a marketing technique, and I'm going to dig into it in the, in the presentation very soon. Four, structure. Be methodical when it comes to applying for jobs. Be methodical when it comes to your interview answers. If you are all over the place and you go into an interview without proper preparation, without following a system, then you're not gonna create that consistency. You're not gonna know what you're doing wrong. So applying a structure is very important. I'll give some tips in terms of how to do that. And five, don't be a hero, be a guide. Don't go in an interview you know, acting as if you're the hero and you're the spotlight. You're there to help the organization. You got to be the person guiding them. And the last thing is having a support system, especially for people who are immigrants. This is critical. You're coming into a new country. It's all about networking. And I totally understand this whole thing about I don't know anyone. I'm in a new place because I have been there myself. So it's important to create the right support system with the people who are actually going to encourage you rather than tell you that you can't do certain things or that you're limited. So quickly going over what I mean by identifying your zone of genius. Zone of genius basically means when your interests intersect with your natural talent and the salary that makes you feel valuable. That is the zone of genius, being able to find an opportunity where you're making the money that you deserve, intersects with your interests and what you enjoy doing, and also intersects what you're naturally good at. So if you don't know your sweet spot, then how are you going to convince recruiters? And also your resume, your marketing collateral is not going to be able to speak to it. It's not going to be convincing. So you stand out only when you know what, what you want and how you appear as a unicorn. So you won't get the job if you're not a fit and you can't fake it. So it's important to know your zone of genius. If you think about it, Apple is successful because they focus on their zone of genius. 
they don't try to compete with Android on things like battery life. They know that their zone of genius is to create a beautiful interface. That's their zone of genius. And that's why they're winning. They let Android deal with the battery specs and all that stuff. So you need to do the same thing and not worry too much about what everyone else is, is doing. Number two, creating a captivating marketing campaign. Your resume needs to be written in a way where it only takes 60 seconds for a recruiter to determine whether they should give you a call or not. Again, going into the whole product analogy, and I, and I use product analogies a lot because I used to be a product manager, Donald Miller, CEO of Story Brand, which is a marketing company says, people do not buy the best products, they buy the products that are communicated the clearest. So you may be amazing at what you do, you may have all the certifications in the world, but if you're not able to communicate your value the clearest, then you're not gonna get a call. So here's an example of a non-captivating marketing campaign. Who's gonna read this? It looks ugly, there's a lot of wording. Look at this resume. No one is gonna read it, it's just a lot of words. Not appealing at all, doesn't captivate me. As a hiring manager, if I look at this, I don't think I'm gonna call the person. Now look at this, Apple's marketing campaign, very concise, not a lot of words, captivating. Life is easier on iPhone and that starts as soon as you turn it on. Look at this resume, visually appealing. As a hiring manager, I'm gonna enjoy reading it. And then I'm gonna give people a call. And I've seen this when I've written um, you know, resumes for people, they tell me that they constantly get complimented because of their resume being visually appealing and easy to read with wording that is concise and truly shows their value. Three, implement storytelling during interviews. So a lot of you know this commercial with Red Bull gives you wings. Why do we remember it? Because there's a story behind it. As human beings, we love stories. That's how we remember. So when you go into interviews, you can use a storytelling technique. Um, think about this. Humanity right now, especially during COVID, is becoming the new premium. This is why marketers use brand storytelling to connect with audiences and pull at their heartstrings. That's why sometimes people make impulsive purchases because they feel an emotional connection to a marketing campaign. And you can do the same when it comes to connecting with recruiters and hiring managers. Four, implementing structures, also known as frameworks or recipes. Imagine baking a cake without following a recipe, putting in the wrong amount of liquid, you know, your cake turns out to be a disaster because you just decided to wing it. Think about, you know, amazing speakers like Obama, right? Does he wing his speeches? Absolutely not, he doesn't. So you got to have some kind of framework and a script in order to deliver effective interview answers. And those are frameworks that I teach my clients um, in order to be effective at interviews as well. Number five, don't be a hero, be a guide because you are there to help your organization. Instead of listing all of your qualifications and taking the spotlight, spend more time listening for the company's pain and focus on how you will be solving it. So this could be why some companies say you don't have Canadian experience, right? Because when you are articulating your experience, you're probably not articulating it in a way that meets their needs. So they end up just coming with a blanket reason and saying you don't have enough Canadian experience. So it's important to really understand the context, the setting of the organization, what are they trying to solve, and act as a guide. Think Gandalf. What is the feeling that Gandalf creates in Lord of the Rings for Frodo? He creates safety. He creates trust. And that's what you need to think about when you go into interview. 
The last thing is the support system. And, and I want to say that this is probably one of the most important aspects that may, that get, lands you that amazing opportunity. You got to surround yourself with like-minded people. I tell people that 80% of a successful job search is mindset. When you start putting limiting beliefs in your head and, and having poverty thinking instead of abundance thinking and saying, I can't, I can't, then of course you're not going to get a job. When you start surrounding yourself with people who are not like-minded, you're not going to get a job. When you start, start to think about people's negativity, you're not going to get a job. So um, you got to make sure that you surround yourself with the right support system. I see this all the time. And this is what made me personally successful in Canada is I didn't let people who would tell me you can't do this. I didn't listen to them. Um, in fact, they would tell me you can't do this. And I'm like, OK, let me show you how I can do it. Um, think about all these successful people who beat records, you know, people um, who were able to beat marathon records, whereas they would say, oh, the, the record is four minutes and then someone beats it. So try not to compare yourself with others. Um, so if you follow this technique in terms of identifying your zone of genius, creating a captivating marketing campaign, implementing the brand stories during interviews, uh, having a structure that creates consistency, being a guide to the organization, having the right support system, the right mentorship, then you can flood your calendars with interviews for jobs that you are excited about and get offers easier than you ever thought possible at a salary you deserve and end up like my clients. So one of my clients here, actually, she also came to Canada in the middle of the pandemic and she landed a six-figure salary offer as a developer. She was very happy. She didn't realize, you know, that she could do this. She's, she's actually, she messaged me this week, actually, telling me how happy she is. So I'm um, very happy to help the community out. If you want to connect with me, you know, happy to jump on a virtual coffee. I know how tough it is when it comes to the job search and, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's the best way to connect with me. Uh, so it's just not a Bohendi. If you do a search on me, you should be able to find me. And I'm actually going to drop my um, information here just to make it easier for people. Um, and if you guys also have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. And I'm happy to spend the next few minutes to answer them. So here is my LinkedIn there. What is your email? Um, if you don't have LinkedIn, you can send me a message at this email address, but um, LinkedIn is probably the best way to reach me. Anyone have any questions? Hi, Nana. Hello. So I just wanted to hop on and say, you know, thank you so much for the presentation. It was fantastic as always. No problem. Yeah, so uh, like Nana said, you know, if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to send them in the chat on the right. You know, she um, she can, she still has a little bit of time to answer them as the sessions uh, will run a little bit past the scheduled end time. So you can stick around after 3.30, you know, and, and um, uh, see how to answer your questions if you've got any. Um, but I just wanted to mention, you know, um, when you talked about people hiring people they like, um, that's honestly something that a lot of people, uh, job seekers, don't think about. That, you know, a lot of the time it's not about how much skill you have or, you know, what qualifications you have. It's just about how much the recruiter likes you, to be honest. And that's that's why they say, you know, that a lot of these jobs are uh, hidden jobs that are not advertised anymore because usually it'll be like, oh, you know, hey, my friend is looking for a job in whatever, you know, the marketing sector. Uh, why don't you, you know, give them a call? Something like that, right? So it's not necessarily because, you know, you have 10 years of experience and this diploma and this certificate and whatever. It's because people want to speak to you and they and they trust in you uh, and they like you. 
Um, so that's super, super important for people to remember. So um, thank you for mentioning that. Um, but apart from that, uh, Vijaya, I see your question in the chat. So I will get back to you about that privately. Um, I'll DM you on, on uh, the platform. But uh, I've also got my email. You can email me too, Jesse. Yeah, sure thing. So I'll, I'll let you know about that. Um, so that's it for me, Nada. If you want to stick around and answer any questions that the chat may have, or you know, uh, talk about anything else you like, you're welcome to do so. But uh, to anyone in the chat, uh, after this, we have the second part of our panel coming up, which is uh, a discussion from uh, industry professionals on issues important to immigrants in Canada. So I'll uh, excuse myself, I guess, and uh, let you finish up your session, Nada. Sound good. Thank you, Jess. Right. Thank you, Nada. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks so much. All right. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Bye bye. Hello. Anyone have any questions that uh, they want me to answer? Uh, well, Nada, the same question that I uh, that I posted on chat for Jesse. That's good. That also applies to you too. So, what is your question? My, no, this is not really my exact my question. Um, it's. It's for Jesse, it's just a quick question. Do you know of anyone or yourself looking for an opportunity to work from home part-time in a financial services? Just a few hours a week. Please contact us and I gave you my contact information. Okay, sound good. Yeah, because I'm also I'm also looking for landed immigrants, those who come over who want to come over here and instead of looking for a job, they can you know work part-time and they can get a recurring income or a passive income. Totally, totally. Happy to refer you if I if I meet anyone who's uh, in that position for sure. Mm. I mean, they don't have to have a financial background. Any background, any background is, uh, will do. Awesome! Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you. You're most welcome. Anyone else have um, questions? I'll stick around for a couple of minutes. If not, then. Um, I will let everyone go. All right. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. And uh, that is my LinkedIn information. If you would like to connect with me, that is the best place to uh, connect with me. All right. Enjoy your day, everyone. Thank Bye. you, Nada. Bye-bye.